Ailey Cole is a professional engineer. She graduated from Youngstown State University with a bachelor's of science degree in civil engineering. She's been with PennDOT since 2008 and works in central office as the chief of pavement management unit and is a central office lead for the implementation of PennDOT's pavement asset management system, also known as PAMS. So if you would please welcome Haley. All right, thank you so much, Rich. Okay, so I'm here to talk about the payment asset management system that we're going to be implementing here at PennDOT. But the first thing that I wanted to talk about was asset management. Um, so we're kind of changing speeds with regards to what we talked about this morning, and asset management is kind of a different way of, of looking at how we manage our pavements. Um, so asset management is a strategic framework for managing transportation infrastructure, aligning resource allocation to maintain and or improve the system to a specific level. So that main point there is specific level, um, where we're setting goals for ourselves to be, um, set uh, condition thresholds, um, performance targets, where we want our pavements to be with regards to um, drivability. Um, it's predictive and not reactive um, with making informed decisions based on the data and information that we have available to us. The principles of asset management are that it's policy driven, so we have it written down, we have it documented, we have everybody on board and understanding where we're trying to go as an organization. It's performance-based. Um, I'm going to get into it a little bit in a couple of slides with regards to um, MAP21 and the FAST Act and the requirements for performance for that. But there, we've also had performance um, measurements for a long time at PennDOT and goals set um, for ourselves in terms of um, deterioration levels um, and, and rideability. That it's option-oriented. Um, we all know that we have a lot of roadways um, at PennDOT, and I'm going to talk about that too. Um, but, you know, we've talked about at, that there are so many different roadways, there are so many different issues with our roadways, there's a lot of different treatments that we can do to those roadways to either um, preserve, re rehabilitate, or reconstruct, um, and, and do maintenance on. And so essentially, we could get out a, a dart and throw it at the, the map of PennDOT and find a roadway that needs something done to it and, and it would be a good treatment, a suitable treatment. Um, but is that really the, the best optimization of how we use our funds? And so that's really the, the crux of what we are getting a payment asset management system at PennDOT for is to um, determine what treatments are the best and most cost effective. Um, as well as being able to know what all of our options are for our given roadway um, in, a, in a county or a district or a statewide management of the system. Data driven. We have lots and lots and lots and lots of data at PennDOT that we collect on our, about our roadways. Um, distress, historical information, um, and so using all of that data that we have had collected and continue to collect um, to the best of our ability. Um, and then transparent and making sure that everybody, um, including the public, is on board with the direction that we're going um, for um, payment treatment selection. <clears throat> so I had said I was going to talk about how many payments we have at PennDOT, and I have a couple of slides on this. I know that a lot of you are from Pennsylvania, so it's nothing new. Um, but you may not think about it the same way that we think about it in asset management at uh, PennDOT. Um, so two quick facts is that uh, PA is the fifth largest for number of roadway miles. Um, we own a lot of the roadways that in other states, counties typically own. Um, so we have anything from you know the interstates and the national highway system that were designed roadways that we put a lot of thought into and all of the layers down to um, the get the farmer out of the mud road that we've just continued to seal coat for the last 30, 40, 50 years. Um, and we never really designed it um, to, to carry loads or to carry a specific set of traffic. Um, 
So we've taken our roadway networks and divided it into four business plan networks. <clears throat> Interstates, national highway system, non-national highway system greater than 2000 ADT, and non-national highway system less than 2000 ADT. So this is a breakout, um, and I'm sorry, but I lost the access. It's miles. <laughs> a breakout of the four business plan networks um, with the number of miles. So you can see that um, not only do we, we have a lot of interstates because we're um, fourth for a number of state-owned um, interstates, but we also have a lot of those um, get the farmer out of the mud type roadways. <clears throat> So I have four quick maps. Um, this is the interstate uh, overlaid over our state. Um, the turnpike is included on that. We don't manage the turnpike at PennDOT, but we do report that information to federal highways, and it's included as part of, uh, of the state um, interstate miles. So this is the interstate with the national highway system overlaid. Um, so the main corridors, uh, roadways of importance to both us and the feds. Um, this also includes the NHS greater than 2000 ADT. Um, so you can see that these roadways in dark green um, are kind of focused in our more urban areas in Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, Harrisburg, um, Reading area. And then lastly, the business plan four network and we have a lot of those. Business plan one, two, and three all added together um, are about the same mileage as we have in our fourth business plan network. And so we have a lot of roadways that don't have a whole lot of traffic on them. So obviously all of these roadways are going to behave differently, um, require different treatments, um, and, and have different users. And so we kind of need to account for that when we're making our treatment selections. So I did talk about having lots of data at PennDOT. Um, we have data for more than 43,000 miles of state-owned roads, um, which we store in our roadway management system. Our roadway management system is just a little bit archaic. It's black with the green letters, um, and I always hit enter when you're supposed to hit control. Um, and then we take that information that we have 30 years of data, and we put it into spreadsheets. And I have blown up many a spreadsheets with trying to analyze um, the, the information that we have from the roadway management system um, to, to report on and to make decision making. And so that certainly um, segues into the reasons why we're getting a payment management system at PennDOT. Um, so once again, why PAMS at PennDOT? Um, so previously we had no um, consistent forecasting means. Um, we do have lots of historical information and so we were able to make um, you know, predictive assumptions based on historical information, but we weren't really um, utilizing it to the best of our ability or making it a more granular approach so that we um, knew exactly what buckets of roadways were progressing and, and what means. Lack of communication between the systems. So I had talked a little bit about our roadway management system and all the information that we have in there. The legacy systems, the old black with the green letters, they don't play well with other systems. And so getting these systems to talk amongst each other um, is often a challenge. We have to try and pr bring all of that information into you know, Excel spreadsheets in order to try and get that to marry up. And so the payment asset management system will help us bring in information from all these different systems um, and be able to have that in one source location so that we can better make decisions from that information. Um, no funding optimization. So we talked about you know all the different treatment options that we have available to us, um, but and we're probably making pretty good decisions. I mean, we think about whether or not a treatment that we select is going to be cost effective. We think about whether or not it's going to be the best use of our money. But not having um, the backup information and reporting um, to be able to prove that um, is, is a challenge when you're trying to say that this is the best treatment and, and the best option for us. Um, so no standard project selection process. We have um, 67 counties, um, 11 different districts. So we pretty much do our uh, project selection 67 different ways. <laughs> There's, there's lots of roadways, lots of treatments, and so um, there's lots of options and lots of different ways of looking at how you make your treatment selections. And so this will help standardize that a little bit and get everybody thinking in the same, 
same line. Um, no e or easy way to determine cost estimates. Obviously, we're able to do cost estimates. Um, but when you're talking about a network perspective and you're talking about 43,000 miles of roadways, when you're trying to analyze how much money you need 10 years down the road, it's a little bit harder to get a quantified estimate for or how much we would need in order to bring it up to a certain specific level as we talked about with asset management. So being able to have a system that can take the specific distress that we have on the roadway, apply the exact amount of money that would cost in order to do that treatment, we can obviously get a better, um, more comprehensive number for those long-term um, upgrades. So no means of modeling a section for um, pavement deterioration. Um, I'm going to talk quite a bit about uh, the deterioration models that we made um, to go into our pavement asset management system, but previously um, to getting the pavement management system, we had no deterioration models at, at PennDOT. Um, political influence and personal preference outweigh data-driven decisions. Not always, but it has been a challenge at PennDOT because it, we didn't have the um, software solutions to be able to prove that maybe this decision wasn't the most optimized um, treatment to do, or, or maybe that it was. Um, we, we, didn't, we weren't really able to compare um, what the forecast was for each of the different treatment options um, and which ones would be uh, the best in terms of optimizing the funding that we have at PennDOT. Um, not centered around long-term goals. We did have long-term goals. We do have long-term goals at PennDOT with regards to um, pavement performance. But the problem is, is a lot of times they're not tied to funding. Um, sometimes it's hard to uh, know exactly what funding we're going to have in five, ten years from now as we talked about, you know, um, the, the federal monies that may or may not be coming our way for, for roadways. But additionally, um, it, the, the setting the goal when you don't have strong cost estimates for what treatments cost and um, what projects need to be done, it, it makes it difficult to um, set goals and then obtain them. Uh, determine if the treatment selection was cost effective. So we did cover that a little bit. <clears throat> So I talked a little bit about MAP21 and the FAST Act, and I'm just going to briefly touch upon it. Um, but it certainly is a driver for getting a payment asset management system at PennDOT. Um, so under MAP21 uh, and the rulemaking for the pavement section, we need to establish performance targets for pavements, um, conditions. Some of these conditions are IRI, running, cracking, and faulting. Um, we're going to have to submit biannual performance reports, so essentially aggregating that information into reports and, and getting those put together um, and meet minimum condition levels, what targets that we set for ourselves as well as federal um, condition levels, and then make significant progress towards meeting those state established targets. So we need a payment management system in order to um, meet the criteria and be able to know whether or not we're going to meet our targets that we set. So the three big takeaways of the payment asset management system is that it's going to help us with project optimization based on funding. So we're going to be selecting treatments based on the amount of money that we plug into the system. Um, and then future prediction of deterioration and benefits from the proposed projects. So we have developed a whole host of uh, deterioration models that take the distresses um, and the historical distresses that we have at PennDOT in the roadway management system. Um, and we're going to use that information to help us pr better predict um, what our pavements are going to be doing, how they're going to be behaving, and the distresses that our pavements will have in years to come. And then bring together the data from multiple systems for analysis and reporting. So back in 2010, um, we conducted a roadway data management study. Essentially, what came out of that study is that we would be getting a consumer off-the-shelf product. Um, there are numerous companies that already make payment asset management systems, and we didn't feel like we needed to recreate the wheel by having our developers at PennDOT um, build us a payment asset management system. So in 2013, uh, we put out a request for a proposal proposal um, to get a payment management system um, that was a consumer off-the-shelf product. 
From that, we ended up selecting Dayton and their um, DTIMS product. Um, <clears throat> so this is not a new concept. Um, Dayton has been producing asset management solutions and particularly payment management solutions um, since about 1986, so 31 years um, of payment management experience. And Pennsylvania um, is Dayton's 20th state um, in order to implement DTIMS. So it's, it's nothing new. We knew it was something that we wanted to do. The problem was the amount of data that we collected and getting that data plugged into a payment management system. And that's where um, Dayton really kind of shined and why we selected Dayton is that they're a configurable solution in that they take any of the, the data that you have in these different systems, um, transform that data so that they can bring it together and you can utilize it to make decisions. So this is an example of um, how we're going to be utilizing our payment management system at PennDOT. Um, in the upper left hand corner are all of the systems that we're going to be pulling from. We have our roadway management system, RMS. We have our construction management system, ECMS. We have our planning, planned projects um, in MPMS and we have our um, maintenance information in SAP. So the payment asset management system is going to pull data um, that we have in each of those systems um, to, to bring in to do analysis on. Um, once that information is pulled in, we work with the districts to set um, the, the cost for each of the, the projects. Um, we've already input lots of information with regards to treatment and those um, benefits from getting a selected treatment. We will run the, that analysis in the central office and then that um, analysis run will be pushed to the districts. The districts as well as the counties can then utilize that output um, to know what the most optimized solution is for the budget that was plugged in, but also play around with, well, what if we got a little bit more money? What could we do? What projects would do we do next? Um, as well as, you know, this one treatment that was selected, um, we may want to push that out another two years in order to coincide with this bridge project, or we don't think this is necessarily the right treatment. What if we do this other treatment and strategy um, and then play around with the cost benefit that's associated with that as well as what the improvement is. And so I do have some screenshots about that um, in a minute here. So deterioration models. Um, we have uh, broken all of our roadways into 54 different model families. So we talked about having you know, very engineered roadways in our interstates and not so very engineered roadways on our um, business plan four routes. And so they're certainly not going to deteriorate and behave the same. And so we took um, you know, pavement type, um, what business plan network, how much traffic it has, and divided all of those roadways into 54 different family buckets. Um, we have made deterministic models for IRI and OPI, and we also made transition probability matrices for all of our other distresses, so cracking and rutting and um, left joint deterioration. So first I'm going to talk about our OPI modeling. Um, OPI is our overall pavement index. It's a PennDOT specific index in which we utilize the different pieces of deterioration um, to form one index that we can get a uh, kind of indication of whether or not it's in good or um, fair or poor condition. Um, so we use those 54 different families um, to de develop um, deterministic models. So this is an example of, I know it's an HMA pavement, um, but we looked at different types of regressions um, so this one has two lines drawn over top of that pavement family um, cluster-wise as well as um, a different regression. And we ended up doing the best fit for each of those 54 different families. Um, similarly, we had um, Dayton develop uh, roughness models for us. So IRI, the National um, Roughness Index, um, is also deterministic model. So 
typically, you know, they're, they're what we're used to looking at with regards to deterioration models. We have, you know, performance that is um, moving um, and, and getting worse over time. Um, the roughness models, um, models against the independent variable of age. Um, once again, we use the 54 different model families. And then we looked at exponential as well as um, polynomial second and third order. And so this is an example of um, our IRI models. Um, so we did the best fit uh, for each of those 54 different families and plugged those into our payment asset management system. So next I want to talk about our transition probability matrices. Um, we, after uh, doing our OPI and our IRI models, we realized that we also needed to um, do modeling for each of those in distresses because the distresses are really what triggers what treatment is most appropriate to do on a given roadway. Um, so a transition probability matrices is the probability of moving from one distress to another distress. Um, this is something that we um, do use a lot in terms of bridges as they have the different um, NBI ratings, um, but it fit well for PennDOT because of um, we already had low, medium, and high severity for a given distress um, set forth in, in the roadway management system. So we ended up developing 350 different transition probabilities matrices um, based on these distresses. So this slide is for HMA and composite. Um, HMA and composite are both separate as they obviously are going to deteriorate much differently. Um, composite pavements are typically uh, concrete with bituminous on top. Um, and these are the different um, distresses that we uh, have modeled with transition probability matrices for jointed concrete pavements. So there's two different ways of looking at um, how you transition from low, medium, and high severity. It's a hard thing to, for somebody to try and grasp as you're talking about it. Um, so this one, um, it's probably pretty hard for you guys to see, but essentially there's um, null, low, medium, and high. So null meaning that you have none of that distress, then you have low severity distress, medium distress, and high severity distress. So on day one, when you build that pavement, you're not going to have any of that distress. The null is going to be at 100%. And then the null is sloping down over that 40-year period. Um, the white line is the medium that you can probably see. The other one's probably too dark. Um, but you can see that medium doesn't start for a couple of years, and then it gradually kind of ramps up. This is the other way of looking at transition probability matrices, where we have um, the null in green, the low severity distress as yellow, um, medium as orange, and high severity as red. And so that you can see, like when you get to, to year 10, um, you know you have a certain amount of um, null. You may have a 10% chance of having a low severity, a 30% chance of having a medium severity and like a 10% chance of having a high severity. And for this one, it was particularly for broken slabs. Um, so another issue that we had to tackle was sectioning of our roadways. Um, how do exactly do you make a project length um, within the payment management system? Um, many districts have chose to section the projects themselves. Some of the districts um, already had this done. We, you have that option <laughs> within the, uh, I didn't fall through the trap door yet, so I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes. <laughs> um, Uh, so many districts chose to section the projects th themselves within the roadway management system, um, but these are the options um, that the, the system does to section those pavements for those districts that, that haven't um, done that sectioning themselves. It looks at business plan network, county, district, um, OPI, and resurface year. Okay, so this is a uh, screenshot of the 34 different pavement treatments um, that we have within the system. And there's um, a lot of different treatments to pick from with a very specific conditions, with a very specific cost. And so the payment management system is um, 
a very, very detailed, complex system that's going to help us better make decisions. So this is a screen that the districts would see with regards to a treatment um, being selected. They can kind of see plotted all of the different treatments with the one that has the best cost benefit. And they can also see then um, in the bottom right corner um, what the pavement would do if you had a do nothing scenario and then what you would buy if you would um, be able to select that treatment in terms of performance. So you can see that there's a performance jump and then how that payment is going to deteriorate after that. So we also have um, reporting and modeling out of the uh, management dashboard. It's another component that goes along with the payment management system. And this is just a screenshot from, from that. And there's a small mapping capability within PAMS too so that we can see what projects were selected and how those are performing. Um, we have a uh, district advisory board um, that we've put together, um, one member or more from each of the districts. Um, to talk about PAMs, and we'll continue to have those meetings once we're implemented. Um, we have had districts involved with the user acceptance testing as well as train the trainer. Um, so we are getting very close to implementation, and we've been saying that for a long time, um, but I think that we're um, finally there <laughs> for our March implementation of 2017, um, and then we'll start working with the districts and going out and helping them um, learn the system and start to get comfortable with the system and then um, it's going to be a ways before we're you know fully implemented probably five years by the time we're really using this um, to make decisions but before that we can use it to compare and see how our programs that we currently have selected are um, are working for us with regards to um, cost benefit so I know I blew through those slides but do, do you have any questions for me? Okay, I appreciate your time.